Today's Bible study is on uh, understanding and treating and analyzing anxiety disorders, the root cause of anxiety disorders. I wrote a uh, study guide on this condition. I've been a counselor for 31 years. You can pick one of these study guides on the root cause of mental illness up at the House of Healing if you'd like, or you can get one off the website. The Anxiety Disorder Association of America keeps statistics on people that have anxiety disorders. It's a disease that's spreading the country. People are picking up anxiety disorders rapidly, and in fact, according to their statistics, over 40 million Americans currently have a documentable anxiety disorder. It costs over $42 billion a year to treat people in this country because of this condition. People with anxiety disorders are five times more likely to go to the hospital and five or six times more likely to get medical treatment than people who do not have them. They are causing a tremendous burden on our medical care system in America. These are the basic, the basic types of anxiety disorders you're going to see uh, on a daily basis, particularly if you're in the ministry. Or if you're going into the ministry, you will frequently see people to have these types of illnesses. The first one is GAD. This is a generalized anxiety disorder, more likely to affect women than men. Uh, OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, also more prevalent in women than men. We'll explain these in a little bit. Panic disorders are also very common. It's when a person suddenly has a uh, surge or a siege of overwhelming anxiety come over them in an instant. Social anxiety disorder is also very common. And PTSD is also a mental illness that is sweeping the country. It's very, growing very rapidly, particularly among our military personnel. And uh, it is usually triggered by a traumatic event. And in fact, most people that are raped or are in heavy combat will come down with PTSD. These phobias are also symptoms of individuals that have anxiety disorders. And these are the most common phobias in the United States. You recognize some of these, spiders, arachnophobia, you know, people are afraid of the dark, they're afraid of spiders, enclosed places, cancer. Um, brontophobia is the fear of thunderstorms. What is the actual root cause of anxiety disorders? I was a secular counselor for 25 years, and uh, in those 25 years, I never actually saw anybody cured of a mental illness. I did not see anyone cured until I became a Christian counselor in 2005 when I saw the Holy Spirit heal someone who had bipolar. And God taught me that there's a central root cause of anxiety disorders, and it's spiritual. It's a spiritually based condition, usually followed by some type of trauma. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, the Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit is telling us that in the latter days, some people will depart from their faith, born-again Christians will leave their faith, and they will give heed to planus pneuma. These are seducing, lying, or deceiving spirits who are able to trick people through doctrines, of devils. The Greek word is didaskalia. It means teachings of demons. In 1 Kings chapter 22, for example, Ahab's prophets were under the influence of lying spirits. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, King Saul was under the influence of fear spirits. In Job chapter 4, uh, one of Job's friends describes the symptoms of someone who was attacked by a fear spirit at night. And in fact, this is a very common experience. People wake up in the middle of the night and they're very afraid. They're paralyzed. Uh, counselors call this sleep paralysis. They wake up usually between two and four in the morning. They can't move. They feel like somebody's choking them. They feel like somebody's sitting on their chest or there's pressure on their body and they try to scream for help and they can't get the words out. Well, this incident actually happened in Job chapter four and he describes it about this fear and is shaking his bones and he describes it as a spirit passing before him. That's very common for people to see shadow figures in their rooms or if you see someone sitting on the edge of their bed or standing by the bed at night and it causes 
tremendous amount of anxiety. It says here he saw an image, he heard silence, he was afraid, then he heard a voice. This is very, very common behavior of fear spirits. Second Timothy chapter 1. The Bible teaches that all this fear does not come from God. Absolutely none of it. It all comes from Satan. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. Delia is the Greek word for fear there, and it means cowardice. God does not give us a spirit of cowardice, but dunamis power, agape love, and the Greek word suffranismos, which means a disciplined and a controlled mind. All that comes from God. Fear always comes from the devil. How do spirits work in humans? How does this process actually work? All human beings, the Bible teaches, are made up of five parts and they have five senses. You're five and five. Okay? You have five parts and they're listed on the chart here. Nous is the Greek word for your mind. Synatesis here is the Greek word for your conscience. Pneuma is your spirit. Suke is your soul. And at the bottom there is Sama, that is the Greek word for your body. Those are the five parts that God gave you and made you to be. You also have five senses you see at the top. You see things, you hear things, you feel things. Everything in your world comes in through these five senses. It's processed in the mind and then it's stored somewhere in the person. Everything comes in through the five senses. Here's a little chart about your brain and how it works. God built your brain and each section of your brain operates something in your body. For example, in the frontal lobe here is your judgment center on where you make decisions, what you eat, where you go, what you're going to do. Uh, the sides of your temple, the temporal lobes have your ability to speech, for your speech, and your emotions are on the lower part of the brain and so on. You see the coordination part in the cerebellum obviously is in the back. Everywhere in your brain operates some part of your body. When these spirits get into the brain, they attack different parts of the body and you will see different types of symptomatology. For example, spirits that attack the temporal lobes here can attack the speech centers and you'll have people that have speech deficits. Uh, they, years ago they used to call them deaf and dumb. They don't do that anymore, but they have patients with stuttering and uh, dysphagia and different types of speech illnesses. If you have a spirit in the brain attacking the back portion of the brain, then you're going to have somebody that has visual deficits, partial blindness, blindness, something of that nature. These spirits, seducing spirits, get into the brain and they cause all kinds of negative symptoms in the person. If a spirit is in the frontal portion of the brain, in the frontal lobe, that's where the trigger is for most mental illnesses. This, the process for anxiety disorders always works like this. First, a lying spirit, a deceiving spirit in the brain puts a thought or a negative thought or a lie into the person's mind. The other spirit, which is a fear spirit, waits to see if the person is going to receive that lie. The thought coming in the head not over 90% of the time is usually negative. If the person receives a negative thought in their mind and they receive it as their own, the fear spirit then strikes the soul and the person then develops this surge of anxiety comes over them. They have this sense of fear or dread and it triggers panic attacks. A panic attack is based on a lie in the mind that's received by the person and they believe it's true and the fear spirit then attacks the soul generating the negative emotions and the panic disorder and the paralysis that causes the person to become fearful. Once this spirit is removed, the lie spirit in the brain, and the lie is caught in the beginning here, the fear and the negative emotions never trigger and the person never has a panic attack. These two spirits that cause anxiety disorders always work in the same fashion. They, one goes first, the other one goes second. They always go in that order. The lying spirit always goes first. The lie comes into the mind. It's usually negative. 
And then, after it's received, the fear demon attacks the soul, and the person then develops this sense of dread or fear or pain, and it shoots through the body with negative emotions. The whole process is fake. The, the thought in the head is a lie. The emotions are lies. They're not caused by the patient or the person. They're caused by the spirits. This process that I call Satan's dog and pony show is at the root of almost every mental illness. And if you'll stop and think about it for a second, you can track it. When somebody has a panic attack or they feel horrible or they feel negative, if you backtrack through that process, at the base of it, the root of it, is some kind of negative thought or a lie. It's usually a self-degrading thought or a dread of the future, but it's always something negative. You're no good, you're, you're not going to amount to anything, you're sick, you're going to die, oh, you're going you're gonna to relapse. It's always some type of negative derogatory thought. Once the person receives that thought as their own, they own that thought. The fear spirit then attacks the soul and your soul is the seat of your emotions. That's where all your emotions come out of. They don't come out of your mind, they don't come out of your body, and they don't come out of your spirit, man. They all come out of your soul. Once this process is set up from childhood, the person then doesn't recognize it and they think the thoughts are theirs. They think it's their thoughts, they think it's their emotions, when in fact the whole thing was literally fabricated. It usually starts in childhood, or after a traumatic event and the person never recognizes it as not being them. Because they think it's them, they continue to process it. Born again Christians also have anxiety disorders. They're as common as they are in unsaved people. And the process always works the same. It never varies. The person that has fear does not have faith. Because fear and faith are oxymorons. They're polar opposites. You cannot have fear and faith at the same time. If you're fearful, your faith is dropped. If you have faith, your fear drops. You cannot combine the two. They will not live together. They will not associate. You either have one or the other. If you're a born-again Christian and you're having fears, that means your faith has sunk. If the person's faith goes up, the fear goes down. Just like a kid on a teeter-totter. It's that simple. Faith up, fear goes. Fear goes up, faith drops. They cannot, they cannot coexist. The process is as simple as I've just explained it. The lies enter the mind from the brain. The spirit is in the brain, putting the lies into the mind. The person's receiving them as if it's their own. Once they do that, the process then goes to its negative conclusion. This certain sense of self-hatred, disgust, depression, fear, rage, whatever it is, surges through the person's body and it's uncontrollable. They can't stop it because they don't recognize this process. They don't understand how it breaks down. Once you can figure out how this thing works, you can win. Let's take a quick Bible study, uh, look in the Word of God and see a case study. This patient in Mark chapter 5 had a severe anxiety disorder. In fact, the symptoms look, appear to, to me to be somewhat similar to paranoid schizophrenia. But if you'll notice in Mark chapter 5, Jesus meets a patient or a man coming out of the tombs. He comes up to him and he's severely mentally ill. He's got extreme fear issues. He's, as you can tell here, uh, uncontrollable. He's homeless. He's out of control. Damazo. He uh, is a cutter. He cries all the time, which is also a symptom of clinical depression. But you'll notice that the diagnosis was not genes or DNA. It was spirits. This man was contaminated or infected with spirits. And these symptoms that we just went over, homelessness, cutting, depression, fear, anxiety, were all caused by spirits. And if you'll notice, once the spirits were removed, the symptoms are back to normal. Here he is sitting in Mark chapter 5, 
He's sitting there. He's not running around like a maniac. His clothes are back on. And he's sitting there as calm as he can be in his right mind. That's what anxiety disorders do. They take you out of your mind. And you're no longer in a real world. It's a fabricated world of unreality. A panic disorder is a fabricated world. It's not real. It's all lies. Once the spirits are removed, the person quickly recovers. How do you treat somebody with an anxiety disorder? If you're in the ministry, you do it uh, the way I do it. You do it through deliverance and truth. A person cannot recover from a mental illness, any kind of mental illness, if they will not receive what's true. Truth is the only thing that heals. Mental illnesses, 90% of them, are based on lies, things that are not true. You must understand these basic truths to be delivered from not only an anxiety disorder, but any other kind of mental illness you're afflicted with. For example, you must understand that human beings cannot heal you. You cannot be healed from human beings. I worked as a secular counselor for 25 years in Maricopa County. I never saw one pure person cured. Not one person in 25 years. I made a lot of money off of sick people, a lot of insurance money. I was trying to help them. I did the best I could. I never healed anybody. I never saw anybody cured until I realized, hey, if you trust in man, you're going to get sick and you're going to get disappointed every single time. It's not that people are not trying to help you or they're crooks. They do care. They want to help. They're doing their best they can. They just don't have the skills. Why? It's a spiritual problem, not a DNA or gene problem. You must understand that only receiving the truth can heal you. Nothing else can heal you. You cannot get healed from listening to lies. I've never seen anybody healed who sits around listening to things that are not true. It's impossible. And you understand that John chapter 8, all lies and all things that are untrue, all of it comes from Satan. None of it, zero, comes from God. He never uses an untruth or a lie to heal someone, ever. Not one time, zero percent. All lies, all untruths, come from Satan. In our society, everybody lies all the time. All those lies come from the devil. No one ever lies and has a message from God. It's impossible. In Numbers chapter 23, God cannot lie is why no one ever receives a lie from God. He's not able to do it. God cannot do everything, and one of them is lie. There's a number of things he can't do. Fail, fall apart, crack up collapse. He can't do any of those things. One of them is lying. He cannot do it. Numbers chapter 23. He cannot change his mind after he gives his word. Once he gives his word, he does not go back. He can't do it. It's impossible. It's not in his nature to do it. Fear has a root source. Fear has a root cause. And here it is. First John chapter 4. There's no fear in agape, is the Greek word. It means unconditional love. The only time you have fear is when you sense somebody loves you but doesn't quite love you. In agape, in unconditional love, there's zero fear. It's another oxymoron. Agape love has zero fear. If you're having fear, there's a problem with your love. Perfect love casts out fear. That's the Greek word teleos. It means mature love. Love that has matured. Not baby love, not kitty love, not dating love, not honeymoon love. True love that matures casts out or throws out fear. People who have that, balo, fear is thrown out. That's the Greek word you would use if we were going to throw a football or throw someone out of a room. Perfect love, mature love casts out fear. Why? Fear has the essence of a mental illness and an anxiety disorder. This is the essence of it. This is how it works. Fear has colossus. Torment. That's the Greek word used to describe somebody being punished for a crime. It is. Anxiety is, feels like you're being tortured. Fear causes people to fear, feel tortured. And they can't stop it. 
Why? They don't understand the true, unconditional love of God and that He truly cares for them and He wants to help them. They can't grasp it because of their circumstances. If you're fearing, you are not made perfect in love. John chapter 8. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you are my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. You cannot get set free from a mental illness or any other kind of illness by listening to people lie or listening to demons lie. All lies do is bring people into bondage. Jeremiah chapter 31 says, you must understand the truth. What is the truth? You have an anxiety disorder. You are deeply loved. You are unconditionally loved. Whether you're sinning or not, whether you're failing or not, doesn't matter. You are unconditionally loved by God and it is an eternal love. And He wants to help you with what? Punishment or judgment? No. Loving kindness. He's a loving and kind person. He wants to help you. 1 Peter chapter 5. This unconditional love of God compels him to ask you, throw everything on me. I'll carry it for you. Give me your sickness and your illness. I'll haul it around for you. By you carrying it around, which is what all patients with mental illnesses do, they carry their own burdens around you're destroying yourself and, by extension, hurting God. You're hurting the Lord. He wants to carry your burdens. He doesn't want you carrying them. That's the wonderful benefits of the gospel and the cross of Calvary. He carries your burdens for you. Matthew chapter 11, Jesus is telling you, you come to me to be healed. You come in. And I will bless you. It says, you who are laboring... Copilo means people that are totally exhausted from working their fingers to the bone. They're just beat. They can't take it anymore. Jesus said, if you're heavy laden, fortizo is the Greek word, overburdened with life, you come in and he gives you rest. You cannot receive the rest of God if you are listening to lies. The key to understanding being healed of a mental illness is to Believe the truth, not lies. What is the truth? In John chapter 16, the Bible says something unusual. It uses the Greek word phileo. In John 14, Jesus said, God loves you. Most people understand that to a certain degree and they, they kind of believe it. But in 16, something strange happened. He uses a different word for love, and that is phileo. That means he likes you. For you to be healed of an anxiety disorder, you have to understand that God not only just loves you unconditionally, agape love, phileo, he likes you too. And that's unconditional love, meaning that whether you're sinning or not, his love always stays constant. Whether you're failing or not, doesn't matter. It always stays constant. He likes you. He wants to be with you. God wants everyone to be well, and that includes people with anxiety disorders. And this is the truth you have to receive. If you have a sense that you've been kind of selected out of the universe as a human being designed for torture or pain, you will never be healed. That is not true. The Bible says that God wants to heal everyone. Second Peter chapter 3 says that God is not willing that any person perish. He wants everyone to come to repentance. 1 Timothy chapter 4 says God wants everyone, everybody, including you, to be saved. And to do what? Come to the knowledge of what's true, not lies. Okay? Negative thoughts in your mind are not true. They're all lies. They're designed by the devil to try to tear down your self-worth. Try to ruin your self-concept. That's the purpose of it. If they can succeed, you will never be well. You will always be on medication. You'll be sick for the rest of your life. If you can receive this truth and remove these spirits, you will completely recover. You will completely be healed. You do not have to have a mental illness. How can you be cured? Three steps. You must receive what's true. What I just told you today is true. You are unconditionally 
loved by God. He likes you. He wants to help you. Number two, you must remove these spirits from your brain. They always work in the same order. The lying spirit comes first. The fear demon moves second. First, the lie comes in. It's negative, usually. The second is the negative emotions coming from your soul, causing fear, panic, and anger, or whatever your symptoms are. Mark chapter 16 says that if you're a born-again Christian, you have been given the authority by God to fix this problem. We can help you. That's what I'm trying to do today is teach you how to fix this problem. It can be fixed. How? You have authority in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and by your faith to cast out spirits from your brain. You do not have to live with these spirits in your brain and you can lay hands on sick people and see them well. Here at the House of Healing we've had Several thousand people delivered from demons in this building right here. We've had several hundred people healed right here. Why? We're just doing these verses. We're using the authority that God gave us to love and care for people. That's what we're doing here. You can lay hands on the sick. And by the way, that includes yourself. What we do here is teach people how to self-deliver. You can lay your hands on your own body and be well. You can lay your hands on your own brain and be delivered from a mental illness. If you're willing to receive the truth, and if you understand how this little process works of anxiety, first the lying spirit goes, then the fear demon goes. It always works in that order. Here is the schedule of our services again. You can come down here for counseling services. You can come down for our healing and deliverance services. All of our services here and all of our programs here are designed to do one thing, see you recover.